Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy Chanda and Bao, and we're back with another episode of Zambian Hip Hop History. And today, guys, I am very, very honored and humbled to have a Z Hip Hop OG, somebody who's done a lot for the game, has contributed so much. And in my personal and humble opinion, one of the originators of Hip Hop Muchinyanja, the legend, the OG himself. Tell me D na mafela. Bra 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 you me ten 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 nayo. Man, thank you so much for coming ah, man. Through, man. The pleasure is all mine. Honestly, bro. man, I'm really so humbled that you would, you know, spend some time with us, man. As I mentioned to you, we're trying our best to, to document Zambian hip hop history, man. There's exactly, so many man. people like yourself. You know, Chindamba, the only question I ask you, man, is where have you been all this time? <laughs> <laughs> it's about time, you know? No, and, man. And coming from you, man, it's a very good initiative because, you know, a lot of people out there are not doing these things because they don't understand hip-hop. They don't understand the culture, you know? Yeah. So you, you need to have heart for the, for the, culture. For the culture, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah, and, you know, I'm most grateful that oh, to be here. You know, oh, man, it really yeah. means a lot, man. Much respect, up, man. man. Honestly, man. And, and, you know, I just wanted to, I feel like in Zambia in general, there's two things. And I say like for me, because I'm a hip hop fan, you know, other than being involved in the game in my own small way, I'm a hip hop fan first. And so when I see, when I look at Zed and look at Zambia, I feel like we need to take ownership of exactly. telling our stories, you know, recording our stories celebrating our achievements and things that people have done and then setting that base and that foundation for the new generation to say exactly. man oh that's what mm, that's what tommy d did exactly you know what i'm saying because like you know how it is man you know that for us to know where we're going to we need to know where we're coming exactly, from exactly bro exactly yeah. and so that's the spirit of the initiative it's just a, a passion project as an avid hip-hop fan to, to tell our stories, you know? And, and exactly. so today, man, today is dedicated to you. Wow, man. No, seriously, man. I'm and grateful. No, honestly, and everything that you've done for the game. So I'd really, really appreciate, man, if we can take the time today to walk people through, you know, especially the way I think about this a lot for me is very much thinking about the younger people, you know, the exactly. people that like, you know, when things were happening, they were, were maybe there, in diapers maybe were, or they weren't exactly. there, you know what I'm saying? So I want them to be like, wow, so that's what was happening back then, exactly, you know what I mean? You know? So that they have that appreciation and so that when, you know, they're making their moves, they know that it's coming from somebody, from you somewhere. know what I'm saying? That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so, very true. so what you're helping build here is a bridge. Because sometimes, a lot of times, I think in Zambia, we don't build the bridge. The older oh, guys yeah. say, ah, you know, they'll, they'll figure it out. Me, after all, after all, me, I had to figure it out. And you know, the funny thing in Zambia, man, nobody's building the bridges. But you see, when you do a wrong move or you pull a wrong move, they, they tell you you're building bridges, man. Which bridges are you building, man? If there were no bridges in the first place, you know what I you mean? See? So I think Zambian industry is very impossible to build bridges without initiatives like this. You know what I mean? It's uh, impossible, and then also it's unintentional again. Yeah. You can bend bridges without knowing you're bending a bridge. bridge. Or without knowing it even existed, existed. in the first place, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. uh? I feel like, um, you know, Zambian music industry comes from like way, way, way back, back, man. Way man. back, yeah. you know. And back in the days, it's so funny that um, Crisis, remember Crisis, Mr. Oh, Swagger? Of course, man. Those were like, those were the only guys that... He had an idea of how to, you know what I mean, document yeah. his stuff. Yeah. And now, right now, he's no longer in Z, but Zed, you can yeah. still tell his story and say, okay, there was once a Mr. Swagger. Yeah. He did this and that. You yeah. know, he had the diamond chain yeah. crew and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because, um, tell you the truth, you need to have, um, you need to be brave yeah. to, you know, to, to decide to do hip hop in Zambia. Zambia. Exactly. Because, you know, from, just from perspe pers perception, mm. Hip hop has been uh, taken to be like a notorious music, you know, gangster music, you know. Yeah. Probably nothing fruitful can come fruitful, out of hip hop, yeah, you know. Yeah. And that's like the mindset of a lot of people who are in, uh, how can I say, those people in a position to like decision maybe, makers, decision and, makers yeah. and, you know, mm. promote the art yeah. and the craft itself, you know, yeah. to go further, you know yeah. what I mean? So I feel like it's a big challenge. Especially used to be. Right now, nowadays, you know, people are just mistaking hip hop. It's, it's like 
rap and hip hop, you know what I mean? Rhythm and poetry. Like yeah. the new guys nowadays are just doing rap. Mm-hmm. They're not doing hip hop, you know, they're not doing the culture, they're just rapping. True. They might rap on a on a on a on a rumba beat, you True. know what I mean? True. On a on a True. reggae tone. True. True. You know what I mean? True. Reggae beat, any different True. sound, but yeah. they still call it hip hop. Hip hop. But yeah. back in the days, man, hip hop. You need to you need to be you need to research about the culture first, you know what I mean? Understand where it's going from. <laughs> it, no, I hear you, man. <laughs> yeah, no, man, I but, totally but, hear but for real, you know I what hear I mean? You, you, man, you, I trust back me. in the days you needed to research. So I think for the guys like for Zambian hip hop, they say a lot of people that were doing hip hop back in the days had the that's the reason why they said no. We're trying to embrace the American American culture. Is mm. because that's the only thing that was there to research when about. They, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That no, was the the only Nas, thing. Exactly. Jiggas, you know what I mean? Happening. Lost Boys. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? The old 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 days. You know, like when you get a source magazine, you know, Oof. it will go around. It will it will do it will do bro, rounds. You know what I mean? It will be like. Bro. It's like in this part of Africa, even the reason why I'll be like a bit out of topic. The reason why coming to America is like one of the most popular movies. Because back in the days when it was just like this, uh, the VCD, I don't know if it's called DVDs or just coming on the scene. So like, so it's the only movie that was available. Actually, that must have been VHS. VHS actually, VHS, yeah. yeah. yeah, You know what I mean? That was like the only movie available. To an extent, everybody was boring. It, boring you know? I mean, that's yeah. the only thing that was there to watch. Wow. Some people have watched it like maybe 50 times, you know, 100 times, you know what I mean? It's the same with hip hop. You know, when you get one source magazine, man, to do numbers, it will be everywhere, man, until the next edition. I don't know if it will take like eight, seven months to get here, but it still do numbers, you know what I mean? So, like, research. I don't know if it's because. We had like a limit yeah. in the material, That's but true. it was it's like <laughs> I don't know if it was a limit in the material, but it's like research was just the only thing that we could do back yeah. in the days. You know, before yeah. you could rap, yeah. you have to get inspired, and for you to be fully inspired, you need to research. You know mm. what I mean? But nowadays, wow. people just pick up the mic and be like, "Ah, Start. you know what I'm saying?" Huh? I think it's important for initiatives like the one that you're doing just now. For for them, cause now we get um how can I say it? now we get a chance you know what I mean now we get a chance to be the ones in the yeah, forefront to inspire true, you know true, what I mean that's huh? true, man. which is uh, something that the hip hop the hip hop scene has been missing for a very long time You're absolutely right you know what I mean huh? for a very long time because if you ask me you know what I mean I've never been to New York yeah but if you ask me about New York man I'm sure I was playing. I'll explain a lot of things that's to you. True, you know what I mean, bro. That's true. You know what I mean. Yeah. Maybe some things, even some people living in New York, never yeah. know about. But I hate it through the music. The music. You know what I'm saying, yeah. bro. You're just <laughs> <laughs> you know what that type yeah. of a thing. So yeah. if you put such an initiative, you 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 make it possible for such a thing to happen. You know, there are a lot of youngsters. You know, like there are a lot of youngsters. Some of them maybe could even be street kids. You know, they don't have parents, but all they have is the music, and the music that they have is the hip hop music. You know what I mean? And now it's like, with this initiative, you have the real hip hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying the current hip hop person that sings is not the real hip hop, but I mean like there's something lacking. Mm-hmm. You know, there's that element of, you know, of um, I don't know how I can say it, like realness, realness, like, realness. like educate. You know what oh, I mean? Motivate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Huh? You know what I mean? Yeah. Help somebody. You know, yeah. get over mm-hmm. certain challenges. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's very good, man. And no, very, no, man. You know, God I mean, bless, man. I mean, bro, up, you've broken down so much just in the in Please that up. in just in that intro, man. And and you know, if you don't mind, if you be so kind, what I'd love to do, man, is take it back, man, to Tommy D as the the young the young guy, exactly. you know, g- getting inspired, like you've said. Like, what were those early days for you? You know, you've said Source Magazine. You've mentioned things that really exactly. resonate with me. So, <laughs> yeah. so what was that process, and when was that happening of you as a young young guy falling in love with hip hop? Just your first days of man, the culture and, the and culture. starting to love it. Exactly. You know, for me, I'm. I think it was even way before even these um, international music channels like Channel O and all that. Yeah. You know, for me it was more like my older brothers. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. I had a brother that used to listen to a lot of Park. I yeah. had a brother that used to listen to a lot of B.I.G. You yeah. know, and every yeah. time they bring the music home and they'll try to explain these things, and you know, I'll just sit back and yeah, watch. Exactly. 
You know, I'd be yeah. like, what's this thing called hip hop that they're talking about? You know yeah. what I mean? So like, um, in my days, I feel like, uh, I feel like uh, locally, I mm -hmm. didn't really have, locally, I didn't really have that, that inspiration. You know, yeah, my inspiration came, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I came from the Western, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The likes of uh, Lost Boys, yeah, Warren G, Mr. G, you know what I mean? <laughs> Warren G and Nick Dog, you know, regulate. Regulate. <laughs> exactly. ah, oh. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I even had sisters that used to listen to Snoop Dog. Yeah. You know, and Snoop Dog, Dog. Doggy style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah! <laughs> this album. This album. You know what I mean? Huh? That album. So, those albums were like, you know, were like, you know, like, uh, according to like my, how I was raised up, you know, yeah. I was uh, like, I lost my mom at an early age, you know, I started living with a step family. Yeah. I had all these like, just these changes that happened yeah, in my life, like abrupt, you know what yeah, I mean? Man. And I didn't have anywhere, like, how can I, how can I, an do outlet, it? No? exactly, like you a, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, like, hip hop was more, more of that to me, I you know what I mean? I, I would listen to the bone tags in Hammond, you know, the crossroads, oh, bro. bro. <laughs> I can you know, that old, old good stuff, bro. you know, bone ah, tags in Hammond. You're, you're killing me right now. I listen to, you know, the Lost Boys, and I just think, you know, like, how can I, you know, because most of these artists I'm mentioning would mm. like express how they felt, yeah. you know what I mean? For them, it was more like expressing how they felt. Mm. And I tried to put myself, like, excuse me, hip hop, you know, so I started off, and before I knew it, you know, there was this, all these, uh, you remember uh, Rap for a Million competitions? Oh, yeah, but was that uh, one of the telcos back 90, then? 90, what, 96, Oof, 97. Jeez, okay. I used to attend those, man. Wow, you know, rap, for, million, rap, rap for a Million, yeah. Wow. And then uh, at some point, a guy from my hood yeah. won the, oh, really? yeah, yeah, won the prize, okay. won, the, won the million mm. those days, you know? Wow. That was a lot of money. Exactly. Back then. Oh no, wait, yeah. hold on, no, this is old yeah, quacha. Old quacha. So I need a thousand. You know what I mean? So a guy from my hood won that. I think it was um a guy called Tony Darkside. I don't think of Tony, Tony Darkside. 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 Guys were like there a crew? Flo? Was there a crew? Yeah, Darkside, Darkside, yeah, crew. because yeah. Darkside crew with uh, DJ Mind Blower. Mm -hmm. I didn't think DJ Mind Blower used to Master be. Master Flo was in that group. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, that was okay. uh, there was a guy called Tony Darkside. Okay, Tony Darkside. And the yeah. other guys from okay. the hood. Yeah. But also Master Flo is from my hood too. Okay, okay. Come on. Yeah, yeah. They did the second rap for a million competition. They didn't make it, but they still came out second and it was cool. Yeah. So it was like so many guys from my hood. You know, coming up and doing these things, and it was awesome for me because yeah, you're like, it's like your hood, you know yeah, what I mean? You know, I represent <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, this is hip hop, man. Yeah. You know, way back in the days when Exa was still rapping. <laughs> Exa, because I remember there was one uh, inter school rap for a million competition, there was Monali. I think Exa was at Monali those oh, days. That's wow. how good I followed that, man. <laughs> Exa was representing Monali. That was like the early 2000s. Yeah. I think it was just 2000. Yeah. You know, so those, like, those things really inspired me, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, we've got guys who can do it locally. Locally. You know what I'm saying? It's not just the Source the magazine. magazine. Exactly. It's also... You know what I'm saying, huh? It's also... Munali. Uh, hey, you know what I mean, huh? So it's it's one of those things where I started pushing, trying to discover myself, like, yeah. okay, if it can be done locally, but what if we try to do it in our local language? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bro. You know? Because Master Flow used to do it. It wasn't really like fully local language. Yeah. You know, they used to have these mixes. They'll With have the a few mix. words, yeah. but it'll be like, they'll be doing, you know, poetry has no language, of course. Of course, but, man. You yeah. know, it was just one of those. I just felt like, okay, but what if I just, you know, Bro. kicked it in the link road, man? Bro. I had that hunger, you yeah, know, and it didn't happen man. until later on in the 2000s, like maybe 2005 or six when I, when I um when I moved to Kablonga, cause okay. of course when I moved to Kablonga, I became closer to people like Mr. Swaga, you know. Yeah. And this guy was always having beats. He would always have beats, even he would produce beats, he would yeah. get download beats, he would have yeah. all sorts of beats, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then back in the days, cause studios were not common. Common, yeah. So we used to use this, we used to record from like like home recordings, you know, yeah. but all we needed was a metal tape. Yeah. You remember the cassettes, the metal tapes? <laughs> Yeah. Then you have like the instrumental on the other side. Instrumental, and then you like, and, and then yeah, you play, yeah. Man, it's just one take, man, just busting and do that, you know? Yeah. So it was good for me, because in Kablonga, I was able to do that. Mm. You know, and when I, I moved to Kablonga, I was like 2005, 2004, five. Yeah. Oh, let's say it was early 2000, actually, 2002, yeah. 2003. Okay. So when I moved to Kablonga, I was able to record myself, because, you know, before I had the, like, I had the, I had this, I didn't know I had the, you know, those days, that's what you used to call the studio. Yeah. I didn't know I had it all along because 
it, all it, all it, all it took was um, you needed a, a hi fi. Yeah, a high exactly. still with a double like a cassette mic. Yeah, and just take jump. a mic, yeah. a mic jack. I didn't know about that. So when yeah. I moved to Kablong, I found guys were already <laughs> doing that. You know what I mean? They were already doing that. You know, just the jack. So, hey, don't move my child. So, uh, time, time, I started, you know, recording my own jams, recording my own jams, but they were still not good enough, you know? Yeah. They were still not, like, accepted by people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I tried to express myself, but mm-hmm. it wasn't good enough. Mm. Until this one time, mm. I remember there was a gig going on at, um, remember there was a place called the Hollywood City? Yeah, of course. It was right. called, um, back in the days, I think it was called uh, the, the Cage. cage. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Huh? So yeah, so like, uh, you know, it was the Cage and it was um, during the showground um, period. Yeah. Agriculture commercial show. So yeah. there was a, a gig going on at the Cage and we decided to go there. Yeah. So we went like the whole Kablonga. All the Kablonga guys were there, you know, yeah. Kablonga people were like, representing yeah you. so we got there ran out of money you know what i mean ran mm. out of money and then it was one of those things whereby we had to walk home mm. walk back home to come mm. longer mm. you know what i mean i was with, with my friend he's late now his name oh. was benjamin so we were, like walking from the from the from the cage to mm. come longer <laughs> You know, did a few detours here and yeah. there. You know what I mean? Mm, I hope you didn't find the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so there's so on the soldiers. We left the place like okay. six. So it was okay. early in the morning. Okay. Like, you know, so we okay. like we make up longer by 10. <laughs> so, you know, like complaining. This, me, I'm, I'm here with my friend and we're complaining. We're like, you know, this guy is not fair. Most of these guys from the hood, you know, yeah. when you have money, mm. we always hold it down for them. For but them. now that we're broke, they let us they, walk. They let us walk, hood, okay. You know, and I was like, yo, man, that sounds like a jam. And that was like my first lingo jam. Yeah. I called it Tika Beola. I was like, Tika Beola. Oh, I see my check here, like, with Tika Beola. You know what I mean? And it sounded so cool, man. When I took it to Crisis, yeah. I did that same home recording arrangement. It was a smash instantly, man. Smooth IK invited me to Radio 4 Fan Club because of the same jam, man. And I think that's a, that's the time my career kind of like took, like off. took off. Huh? Yeah. Wait, so that that's like when like 2003? 2003, yeah. yeah. 2003, wow. man. I joined the Radio 4 Fan Club. Wow. I had this one song. And at that time, I remember, mm. I think Black Moon was like the hottest guys. Yeah, the hottest guys, huh? And like, you mm. know, I grew up around those guys who were like more like my older brothers. Mm. They used to do a song called Kalifunko. They used mm. to be rapping, then they just then made they... up something. Because you know, it was hard to penetrate. Hip hop yeah. was, was not welcome. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Like you know back I mean? then, because it's like hip hop, you have to sneak it in. Exactly. You know, Black Moon used to be like rapper rappers, you know what I mean? But they had to like, yeah. So they are so elite, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. By saying that's what I mean, like, yeah, they were not rapping the way they wanted, wanted to do it, you know to, what I mean? Yeah. They had these restrictions. Mm. Mondo Music signed them up, told them to sound a certain way, mm. you know mm. what I mean? Mm. So I listened to them and I was like, but these guys, I know their potential, you know mm. what I mean? So one time, at uh, they, they used to live in Kawata too. Yeah. So by the time I moved to Kablonga, I used to like, you know, take trips to Kawata and go, go to their house, yeah, you know. Yeah. Go to their house for the freestyles, meet with other rappers or yeah. other, other artists just, yeah. you know, in general. So this one time I composed a song on the, and I composed a freestyle. Okay. Um, On the Aliyah beat, the, there was this tough, tough Aliyah. Try again. No. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try again, the Timbaland production. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I recorded that jam, and that was my second song. So I was like, every time I do something in lingo, you know, like, yeah, the response was... just like loving it. Exactly, you know what I mean? So I started doing more lingo stuff than, yeah. than, then, than the, yeah, the usual, you yeah, know what I mean? Course, so, man. But it wasn't official in the hood, because you know how Kablonga is like, man. Everybody's just like, you know, in their own... In their own world. Uh, exactly, you know what I mean? So like, I used to do that, but... The only people, but you think, the people that knew about me, like rapping in lingo, Smooth Ike was one of them, wow. and just a few guys from, you know, Kawata. Kawata, exactly. Present. So it was one of those things whereby, this one time, I did a freestyle, like we're just doing a freestyle session in the hood. Mm-hmm. So I said, do some lingo stuff. I had another connection of mine from the hood, um, some guy named, he used to call himself PIMP. Yeah, MP. Yeah, MP. <laughs> Cornelius. I was a Same tough Cornelius. rapper, like this punchlines, you know, yeah. battle freestyles and all that. So yeah. I, I busted a little lingo for him and I was like, oh hey, man, this is dope. Yeah. You should do it more often, more, you know what I yeah. mean? So he became like my hype man because yeah. every time I would try to rap, he would be like, ah, but have you heard this guy do his lingo stuff? Lingo, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I try to come up, he's like, have you heard this lingo, lingo. stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so I was forced, you know? And slowly, 
you know, I started just like getting into it to some point when I I moved to I moved to Avondale. Yeah. I was living in Avondale. Mm-hmm. Then um, I linked up with uh, Charlie Bravo. From oh, wow. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I linked up with Charlie Bravo. Yeah. From so when I linked up with Charlie Bravo, it was one of those things whereby I found the people I found the Sling Beast, man, you mm. won't believe, man. Mm. I found, you know, Damien. Damien, no. Oh, yeah, 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 so I have forgotten his uh, so good, so good yeah, 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 yeah. Superman Lukunde had a group. Yeah. They were doing some stuff. I forgot what the group was called. Yeah. It was a long wow. time ago. I found those guys. Those guys wow. were the, like the main artists are sling beast. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> those guys were the main the main artists are sling beast, man. I won't lie. These wow. are the guys I found. And I found these other guys, Sean Che, that was a group called Tiamaluchi. Okay. You know? So there's um the same song I was talking about, the one I did on the Try Again beat. Yeah. I I went and uh, freestyled it at the, the Sling Beat Studios. Yeah. And I found these guys when uh, Damien and Soka working on the beat. Yeah. So they let me freestyle on it. The next thing, they let me put a bass. The next thing, the producer said, nah, let this guy do the whole song alone. <laughs> wow, they I'm just hijacked you, the whole arrangement. I just hijacked the whole... <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just like that, man. Wow. At that time, I was still in school, you know. I was still wow. doing like my GCE. I was like, wow. Oh, wow. Wait, with 10 or 11. Wow, man, you started, man, you started yeah. early. You were making so moves doing, exactly, early, bro. That's know, I was doing crazy, my GCE, bro. man, so there's that school issue, but, yeah. you know, Sling Beast, the way they took me, they, like, put me, because it's like the studio was just starting also. Yeah. They were not big, 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 yeah. but they were just starting, you know, yeah. they, that was before the, dis- I mean, Chameleon discovered himself, yeah. a lot of guys, you know. Yeah. I think the, after I did that song, it even became the title track for, for the compilation, the first thing based on compilation. Oh, yeah. What was the name the of the song? The song was called Nvelani. Wow. So Danny, Danny yeah. Mashiniza, he yeah. had an album called Nvelani. His first album actually was titled Nvelani. So there was um, like a conflict in, um, in of the name. Yeah, of the name. Ah, yeah. So they put it in um, in Bemba. Oh. Yeah, so okay. the compilation Ufwen. is called Ufwen. Oh, okay. You know, that's why these guys come from the K Million, all these guys, mm. Taitu, Hamora, mm. everybody was on that. On that wow. on that compilation that was like 2005. That is- so after that you know i kept pushing i yeah. this kept pushing but yeah. you know how it is it's still hip-hop it's yeah. still not accepted it, especially you know, back mean, then bro back then man it's, like, we, get- it's funny because <laughs> we were the as hip-hop obviously as a culture we were the underdogs exactly you know well, so you had to work you know, like harder hip-hop, you have to like maybe if you want to be heard or something you have to feature on a on a on one of the, yeah the r&b type of so z songs you know what i mean so that's how it happened. I think Charlie put me on um, Chameleon's remix because uh-huh, uh-huh. Chameleon was the first guy to really like blow up from no, the studio. Eh? Did the Oleo Kisha. Yeah. Oleo mm, Kisha. Album. It was a smash. <laughs> then <Yeah>. my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So like, um, yeah, so he put me on. I did the, I, I, I appeared on the Oleo Kisha. Remix. The, the remix, oh, that's yeah. That's awesome, man. I appeared on the remix and that was like the first time I ever heard the song featuring me on number one. Wow. I had like Radio 4, man, it became a smash. Everybody wow. was playing, you know, number one, Radio 4, number one, where number one. So I was like, really, by that yeah. time I was now really, you know, yeah. motivated. Yeah, man. I was really motivated. I was like, if it can be done, it can, can be, be done. done. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So moving on, you know, like um, somewhere 20, 20, I think in the same year, 20, mm. or oh, it must have been 20 or six. Okay. When, uh, I think LV. Okay. I think LV is one that. Mr. V's, yeah? Mr. V's, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Put out an album and just a smash again. Mm-hmm. Now, um, what was that album called? No Sweet, No Sweet, I think. Like oh, No Sweet, No Sweet. No Sweet, No Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but you this. see, the funny yeah. thing is, mm. Mr. V's was still in my style, you know what I mean? Oh. And these guys were telling me, you know, Taitu told me about it. Mm. Before I heard of Mr. V's, everybody mm. was telling me, yo, man, this, mm. every, every, this guy called this LV. Guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's still in your style. Mm. I was like, for real. And you know, like for my background and the yeah. way I looked at hip hop, yeah, it was so strange for somebody to steal your style. Still, yeah, I was like, like, like mm, what's the point of bro. stealing my style? But it's my style, it's exactly. like forbidden in hip hop culture. Exactly. So you know, Mr. Vizi came up. Then Mr. Vizi, I think, is one that made me see the other, the other level of the game. Because mm. I realized, you know, in, there's no way you can be just alone in the game. 
And if you're alone in the game, without any competition, trust me, you'll be lying to yourself or you'll be either lying to yourself or heading the wrong direction. You know what I mean? So, like, I started paying attention to Mr. VZ also. Yeah. I was like, so what is he putting out putting this time? Out, yeah. And I was surprised because Mr. VZ, him, when he came through, mm -hmm. he just came through like a storm or something, man. Mm -hmm. He started working with cooler beats, you know, it was already an established yeah, already, record yeah. label and they had, you know, all these good sounds, great sounds and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. So his album was just a smash. Yeah. The next thing I'm seeing him on magazine, there used to be a magazine. Trendsetter. Trendsetter. I'm the guy on Trendsetter front page, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? So everybody was laughing like, hey, oh, Mr. Vizzy took your style, Mr. Vizzy took mm. your style. But because I saw the, like, the next level, I told yeah. the people, but I think it was this conversation I had to be tied too. Yeah. Because tied too was the one who was really touched about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Sling Beast became more like a camp. Yeah. You know, there was from my side, yeah. there was cooler beast, but there was Sling Beast also. Sling Beast, so, so beast, beast yeah. was taking it like it's a camp. Also, yeah. like Sling Beast, you know, they stick out for each <laughs> other. Yeah, you know what man, I mean? Yeah. So Taito was having this conversation with me, but I told Taito, I was like, you know, mm. Mr. Viz won't be the last person to steal my style, my you know what I mean? Because if you think about it, there hasn't been anybody that who's done it fully, this. fully, you know what yeah, I mean? Like man. hip hop in the lingo, you know what Bro. I mean? So before, you know, before I could say no more, man, Slap D popped up with another jam called the Sembe mm, mm, You know what I mean? Mm. And it was funny because Mr. Viz is the one who started wanting to bite you to, to fight Slap D and say no, Slap D, there's no way you can bring still. Oh Slap really? You know I mean? No ways. Exactly. So there was a so I didn't know. A, exactly. Every Mr. Vizzy and Vizzy I, I, I didn't Slap. even know that. By that time, you know, it was those days when hip hop wasn't really <laughs> yeah, appreciated, appreciated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had that kind of thing of, uh, no, Slap is still in my style, Slap is still in my style. Mm. Until we decided to do a remix to his song, the same as wow, song. okay. So it was me, Ozzy, and Peterson wow, on okay. that jam. Yeah. So, like, uh, moving fast forward after that Slap D, you know, a lot of people just, it's like, slowly, it started being accepted, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, you can, you can sound hardcore, you can, you know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? So people started accepting it, accepting slowly sound, by slowly, yeah. you know what I mean? Slowly mm. by slowly accepting the sounds mm. too. Like two th 2007, yeah. I think 2007, that's when I, I finally managed to drop my album. Yeah. But this time it wasn't even under Sling Beast, it was under Raniel, we had a showdown okay. entertainment. Okay. Because Raniel just came through like, you know, those I don't care type of people, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. is this what they're saying about hip hop? Mm. I don't care, I don't we're, care. Going, we're going to push. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just like, he actually learned more. I spent more time with Sling Beats, but I actually learned more from Showdown mm. by working with Renault. I learned just a lot of because we only worked together for just a year, yeah. from like 2007 to 2008. Yeah. And the album, it got a buzz, but you know what I mean? Renault, he was established those days, so mm. he knew how to push and those, yeah. that's uh, super shine, super shine. Super shine. Yeah, shine, super shine yeah. investments. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There were the guys putting out the album yeah. after Mondo Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he knew, he knew how to do this thing. He yeah. tried to push it. Yeah. And of course, we said, we sold like, we sold a lot of copies, yeah. actually. But it was one of those, like, we're pushing. It wasn't just like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, like free flow, like yeah, it's just moving. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was one of those, I think, I know also, he had like you know a rough time dealing with hip hop, yeah. hip hop music. Yeah, because it was in the early exactly. days, and so it was Tweet still quite to, like uh, that yeah, car. You know what I mean? Yeah. He decided to sign Brian. Mm. You know, and Brian's album was a smash. You so, mean Brian? Brian, no, no, no. Oh, Brian, okay. Brian, 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 okay. the Prince of Chester. Yeah, I was like, Brian, 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 the Prince of Chester. I was in his own zone, man. I wouldn't be lying, man. He was in his own zone. Because you see, the time I sling beats, like one of my biggest, like, um, my biggest moments at Sling Beast was yeah. the time we like opened the floor for Mafiki Zolo that time when they had the smash. The Princess Chilston was there, man. He was wow. doing his thing. He performed there, you know. And him, the final thing about Brio, I think he was he was raised up in, I don't know if it's Zim or the States oh, or something. Okay. He wasn't raised up in the LSK because okay. the way he came through, man, mm. he was like, he was organized, man. <laughs> I don't know. Man. Those are the, the first people I saw in the game who were organized. Yeah. Like the Prince of Chelsea was organized, man. Wow. Like dancers, you know, yeah. everything on point. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't standing under any record label. Wow. And I think mean, his father had a record label, so the Jive, Jive oh. Beat Center. Yeah, okay. so he was, he was in his zone. I don't know. So like, okay. One of my biggest moments, I think, this was the time when I even shared the stage with Brio. Mm -hmm. You know, so he was organized so, oh, from a long time ago. I, he even disappeared at some point and came back came with a bang back. again. With Bombshell and them. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. But like, so 
Yeah, so like I was saying, mm. 2007, yeah. As uh, after doing the album with Vanel, with Vanel yeah. you know, like uh, we only we only went on one album, mm. and it's because of the challenges with dealing with hip hop music. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I think for Vanel, it was more like one of those things whereby ah, you can't control these rappers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, he was like one of those guys. He would be like no performing at the club, yeah. and he had no what what. But me, I was hungry for the game, mm. so I would have those two my things of um, I had um, I, in, on the album I had a song with the late Levins. Yeah. And Levins was uh, more on the unruly type of yeah. side, you know what I mean? It was like, ah, sad. The song on the album, me I only have one jam, and the second song that I have is the one on the album. Mm. So whenever I'm doing a show, you need to be there, yeah. man. We need to perform yeah. this thing, you know what I mean? So one time we were performing in the hood, Kawata, mm. and Ranel didn't know about that, but you know it was so close to his house that he could hear us perform the whole yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know I went to the studio and just served me with the lady and told me no. This was an agreement and this is what you've done. So, you know what I mean? I'm finding it difficult to work yeah. with you. Yeah. And then after that, you know, after I came out of the Renault deal, I wasn't even like, I, I wouldn't say, because I learned a lot of stuff and yeah. I benefited a lot. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. after I left uh, Showdown Entertainment, yeah. I think I had a bit of value, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because yeah. there was like, you know, the album there, yeah. there was, you know, photo shoots we were done, you know, yeah. we had worked on some things, you know what yeah. I mean? So I had like a few things that I could like, yeah. Fall back on, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I got spotted by um One Love Studio. Okay. It was in Chilanga. Yeah. It was in Chilanga at first, mm-hmm. then it moved to Ndola. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chilala Hakalima. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was uh, like the 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 CEO. Okay. Yeah, so what happened is I had this one song mm-hmm. that I was working on. Like there was one song that I um I think Crisis is one that made it first, produced it first for me. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't satisfied. Yeah. I really needed somebody. I wanted, I, I had confidence and in the song. You know how it is yeah? when you're just when you have that confidence. Like, ah, okay, this song might be the song. The one. Because this time I'm talking 2007. Yeah. I'm talking like Slap D, you know, had done a kabanga. He had like a song called Solola. Okay. He was no, like was getting like established that. at his manager and they were pushing records, you know. Yeah. And one time they approached me after the head, I like had the, the deal with Rano had ended. Yeah. His manager approached me and said, okay, why you guys can't join together and, you know, do, make a group, you and Slap, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, it didn't work out for some reason. Yeah. So I ended up working with One Love Studios. Okay. And One Love Studios, how it happened Mm. is because um, Jerry Fingers was the guy I was poaching. And Mm. I was like, you know, help me with this song. I've got this song, but I feel like it's not complete. You know what I mean? Jerry Fingers said it. No, actually, Mm -hmm. it's a, you know, it's, you are very lucky because there's a studio that I've been working with okay. and it's just moved to the copper build. Okay. So we want to go and test our sounds and test That's everything right. there. And there are no artists there. Uh-huh. So I can actually record the whole record. You can be my first artist and I can record you like oh. your whole album. Wow. Imagine how lucky I wow. got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you can actually do that for me. And it was like, no doubt, no shoes, no payments, wow. nothing. It's just like free of charge. The album wow. will be yours. You know what I mean? Wow. So when we go to Ndola, yeah. When we go to Ndola, I found uh, I found Yellow Man there. I found a guy called ah, Chico Charlie. Also so that's there. how you linked up Yellow Man. That's how I linked up Yellow Man from my last studio, man. That's how I linked up Yellow wow. Man. I found Yellow Man there. I found all these other guys, you know, wow. and they were making music. But me, I had so this Yellow song man is in particular. From Copperbelt, huh? Yellow Man, no, Yellow Man is ah, Yellow Man, man. It's hard to tell, man. <laughs> Can go Yellow Man. You've been living stone. He's got a home there, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, like, you find he's got a home there. Come to LSK, he's got a home there. Even some hoods, you know, that you wouldn't expect, man. Go with Yellow Man, you find that, like, ah, Yellow Man used to live here, man. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's not crazy, man. So, like, so uh, to, yeah, 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 so I get to know, I link up all these great artists and yeah. they do music. And, you know, by that time in Indola, there was no radio station. Stations, huh? There was no wow. TV station. So these guys were like, just literally like parading their music. Yeah. They'll just record and give the parade. They don't put on the flash. And, yeah. you know, that's how the music was circulating yeah. in Indola. Yeah. So, me, I already, like, I really had this song on my mind. That's the only song that was my main focus. It was your focus. You know? Huh? But I had other songs also. And then I had, uh, like, you know, I had, um, I, I linked up some guy named Nami. He's a producer too. Okay. I tried to work with him in Lusaka, but it didn't work. Mm. So I was like, ah, my God, record the other song mm-hmm. with Jerry Fingers. Yeah. You know, and I was mm-hmm. like, ah, no, I record the other songs. Let me record this song because this, this is the song one. that I came with. Yeah. I came for. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. So I did the, the song. The song that I wanted to record was called "You Were Nine. Mm. I did the jam. 
with Jerry Fingers, it didn't sound dope. Mm. Guys were like, no, record the other song, talking mm. about Masese, you know what oh, I mean? Okay. And Masese was a bit like away from the hip hop, real, real yeah, hip hop yeah, type yeah, of thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I tried that song with Jerry. Mm-hmm. It sounded dope. Mm-hmm. I was just like, ah, you know, because me, I was like thinking hip hop. Yeah. I wasn't into that yeah, kind into of the, diverse type yeah, of sound. Yeah, thing, yeah, right? yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. ah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I yeah, recorded <laughs> one song at night, the next song in the morning. We recorded like the album in a space of three days. Wow. You know, we recorded the album in the space of three days because I recorded like four other songs, like with KME and yeah. Digital X and these other stages. Oh, wow, I wrote yeah. my song, song, song. Very dope, yeah, so I recorded like six songs in three days. Mm-hmm. Then I included like four songs that I already had. And yeah. the album was done in done. three days. Wow. So the time the album was done, the owner of the studio, One Love Studios, Mr. Chilala, yeah. got interested in the album. He was like, you know, I can actually promote to sponsor yes. your album. Mm. And Jay Fingers was like, oh no, this bad, he's got money. Mm. And you know, he's got a passion for music. He's mm. not like these other guys. Yeah. He's got the passion, passion for music. Yeah. He does not, not only does he have the money, but he loves music. Yeah. So if he says he can promote your stuff, just go ahead and send it. And he gave me the, the best deal. Wow. I doubt if anybody gets those type of deals in wow. there where you get like, he was getting like 30% of the royalties yeah. and then like, maybe 15% of the shows and if I if I organize the show myself I get like 100%. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. He really wanted me to yeah, sign and that's how I signed that deal. Yeah.